Welcome and thank you for joining us for this Bible study brought to you by the Saudi Church of Christ. My name is Joel Danley and I serve as the minister here. We have a great bunch of people and if you're not familiar with our congregation, we hope that you'll check out our social media, Facebook page, website, any way that you can get in contact with us. But we thank you for watching this video. To our members, we're thankful for you tuning in. Look forward to studying together for just a few moments. We continue to miss meeting here in this auditorium, but we look forward to the day, hopefully in the near future, when we can be together to sing praises to our God and worship Him together again soon. I hope that you have your Bible handy this morning. We're going to be looking at several passages as we think about what the Bible has to say about a phrase that you've very possibly heard before, death and taxes. That's something that we use from time to time. Of course, it ultimately means things that are certain. Maybe you've heard it used as the phrase death and taxes. Maybe you've heard a third phrase that's been thrown in there. Oftentimes that's used to, again, describe something that is sure. The former preacher here, our brother Bill Greer, would like to say death, taxes, and the Yankees winning the World Series. That's what he would say because of his beloved Yankees. And that would, of course, allow us to think that that was something that is certain. When we think about that phrase, Benjamin Franklin is the one that usually comes to mind who has that phrase attributed to history. The first American, he's often called, he was a writer, politician, inventor. And in a 1789 letter, he was quoted as saying, our new constitution is now established and has an appearance that promises permanency. But in this world, nothing can be certain except death and taxes. When we look at the history of that, as you go back in history, it, there's actually a few other guys who use that phrase. In 1726, the English writer Daniel Defoe said things as certain as death and taxes can be more firmly believed. And actually, 10 years before that, in 1716, English writer Christopher Bullock said, "'Tis impossible to be sure of anything but death and taxes." Now, as we said earlier, and even use the example of the Yankees, this, this phrase is sometimes meant to be humorous or to be a bit of a joke. But the question for us this morning is, does the Bible actually say something about these so-called facts, these things that are certain? Not that the Bible directly addresses this idiom, but we can take an earthly statement and make spiritual application to our lives. So let's examine together with open Bibles a few of these words or phrases that are included here in this statement. Number one, death. So we come to the first word and we already have a little bit of a point of contention or a sticking point, if you will, because despite popular belief, death is not absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, 100 percent certain. If you have your Bible, let's turn to first Thessalonians chapter four. First Thessalonians chapter four, the entire section is verses 13 through 18. Now, certainly in a study such as this, I will give you a passage and we'll look at a verse or two. I hope that if you have time or if you're making notes, you can go back and look at an entire section of Scripture. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, specifically verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Verse 17, then we who are alive, notice there, then we who are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. So when we look at the world around us, the world that we live in, the world that we have always known, we see that for about 6,000 years, and if I could pause there for just a second, if you're watching this and you're not a Christian or you're watching this and you say, well, yeah, I believe the earth to be millions of years old. I believe the earth to be somewhere around maybe 6,000 to 8,000 years old. We don't have time for that full discussion in this video or in this lesson, but you, if you would like to know more more about that topic than or what the Bible really has to say about that matter then we would gladly study with you we hope that you would contact us and there's a host of materials including of course primarily the Bible that we would look at to understand some of those scientific things that people use to discuss the age of the earth but back to our thoughts on death now, I know that one of the main issues is that what we have always known when we look around us in this world, what we have always known for almost 6,000 years is that people have died. I understand that. You have lost loved ones probably. I have lost loved ones. And so when we think about this fact, we see death and we think that it is a certainty. 
So because the Lord has not returned and the day of judgment has not happened, then we feel like death is certain for us, that we will die. And the truth of the matter is, is that honestly, maybe everyone watching this video will die one day if the Lord does not return. But remember the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 42. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. When we really think about the facts of the matter here in regards to death, yes, everyone we have known in the past has died. We may possibly die. But what does the Bible say about death? Well, there will still be some folks alive when the Lord returns. Honestly, honestly and biblically, death is not certain. It may be, and it certainly feels like it, but the message of the Bible is that we should not worry whether we will die or not, but we should live a life prepared. Prepared for eternity by being faithful here upon this earth. So we look at death and we think about the first part of this statement that we began with. The second part of this statement, of course, is the idea of taxes. Now, this second part is one that no one likes to talk about. And before you stop the video or start clicking on related links, hear me out for just a moment. Taxes are not always fun. It's not something that we enjoy doing, even if they are a part of our country and a part of things the way that our country continues to operate. But the Bible is very plain on this message as well. Two passages let's examine together very quickly. First of all, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, again, the entire portion of Scripture would be verses 1 through 7. And it begins very succinctly in verse number 1, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. It could stop there. Enough said. The Bible says by inspiration of the Holy Spirit here through the inspired pen of the Apostle Paul that we should obey the government. But we move backward, if you will, a little bit in time to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22 in verses 15 through 22. Matthew 22, 15 through 22. Again, for our purpose, we'll kind of recap it here, but maybe you can take a moment to read it. Notice here that the, those who are gathered together are trying to trap Jesus. They're trying to trap him in what he is saying. They're trying to trap him between him not saying what, he, what they want him to say when they ask him, is it lawful to pay taxes? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? They're trying to trap him between the idea that he would say that, yes, you should. And then they're going to attack him under the idea of his authority. And if he says yes, it would discredit him, discredit him among the people. So they want him to maybe say yes. But also if he says no, then he would be in trouble with the Roman government. So they're going to use this, this question, as they oftentimes did, to try to trap him and get him to say something that would give him trouble. But of course, Jesus' answer is perfect. It's perfect in that it's a perfect answer to this terrible trap because he says, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. So as we think about this particular passage and we think about this particular idea, we need to be watchful for our government, hoping to be sure that they are acting in a moral, upright way. We need to be prayerful for our government, praying that our leaders would seek God's counsel and His will. And yes, we must submit to our government, even in the form of taxation. It's not something that we enjoy. It oftentimes is a bit of a joke between people. But when we think about death and taxes, we usually consider those things to be certain. But what I would like for us to do in our last few moments of this lesson is consider some things that are truly certain, again, from the perspective of the Bible. As Christians, we are doing our best to study God's Word, to know exactly what it says, and to live by it. So what does the Bible have to say about some things that are certain? Well, in the third point of this lesson, we want to look at one particular thing that is absolutely certain. But I would submit to you as we begin talking about these biblical matters that there are a handful of things that are basically 100% certain in our human lives. First of all, suffering. In Job chapter 14 and verse number 1, the Bible says, Man who is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Many of us agree with that. If you live past being a teenager or even as you get into your teenager, teenage years and certainly as you become an adult, there's lots of things that give us trouble. We recognize that and it gives us a bit of grief. 
But we can't look at our children and say, you'll never face adversity. You'll never have any trouble because it is basically 100% certain that we will face some trials and tribulations here upon this earth. A second thing, sort of in connection with that, is persecution. Now this is an interesting passage. We look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 12. Paul writes to the young man Timothy and says, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So persecution should be almost 100% basically something that is certain. Now we understand that in the year 2020, in the country of the United States, that we don't face the same type of persecution that the early Christians faced, that Paul and Peter and others faced. But hopefully we will face some. Because as Paul is saying to Timothy here, if you're living godly, you will have some trouble. You will face some persecution. The idea, of course, on the other side of the coin is, if we are not living godly, then we may be living carefree. We're not going to face any trouble because we're not standing for the Word of God. We're not taking a stand for Jesus Christ. If we do that, we're going to have some trouble. We're going to have some persecution. So when we think about suffering here upon this earth, when we think about persecution, yes, those things are, are pretty much basically certain here in our life. But one thing that we can know for sure, and I would submit to you in the thought here of death and taxes, one thing we can know absolutely sure as we are alive and breathing here this morning and as we watch this video is that each one of us will face a day of judgment. It's absolutely certain. Whether you live for a year or 15 years or 40 years, we will face a day of judgment. Let's again see what scripture has to say. Several passages. Romans chapter 14 and verse number 10. Romans 14, 10. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of of Christ. Paul continues on in that same section going down to Romans 14 and verse number 12. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Seems pretty certain to me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 10. Paul again writing. He seems to be certain about it. He shared it with those in Rome. He's sharing it with those in Corinth. 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. But you know, it wasn't just Paul. We look at Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 5. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 5. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. The Bible seems to be very plain and very clear that while death may not be certain, and yes, even in a sense here upon this earth, taxes are certain, that the day of judgment is absolutely 100% certain. My father-in-law, who also preaches, has a way of saying and loves to say that in, on the day of judgment, you can't be both and you can't be neither. It's got to be one or the other when it comes to either an eternity in heaven or eternity and punishment in hell. It's going to be one or the other. You can't say and ask for more time. You can't say, well, give me another chance. You can't say, well, I, I would like to choose both or I would like to choose neither. It's going to truly be one or the other. Now, we briefly discussed this in our first recorded lesson here on our YouTube page on May the 3rd. As sure as we can know there is a day of judgment, we can know that there is a heaven and we can have hope of being there. That's one of the basic fundamental principles of the Bible, something that we can always turn back to. That's what we said in that particular lesson on May 3rd. But as we think about it here in context of this particular lesson, there is a heaven, there will be a day of judgment, and we can, as we live here upon this earth, looking toward that day of judgment, have a hope, a hope of heaven. Now, the Bible is very plain about this idea of hope. It speaks very clearly about what true biblical hope is. It's not the hope that I might say, well, I hope that it doesn't rain today so that when I get home, I can play golf. Or that I might say, I hope my wife makes my favorite dessert tonight when we finish eating dinner. That's not the hope that is true biblical hope. When I say that I hope I have a home in heaven or I have hope of a home in heaven, it is an assurance. It is not a wishing it's not a hoping, but it is a confidence. And so you see the day, of the day of judgment is sure. 
But just like in school, when you studied a subject, when you studied a subject and then the test day came, a day of judgment, we know the answers and we can be prepared as if we had studied for the test. Whether you went through elementary school or you went into high school or you went into college, you recall a time where you were presented with information, you needed to study it, and then there was a test to see what you knew of what you had studied. Well, we're thankful that when it comes to the day, day of judgment, it's not something that we just wish that we've done our best or hope that we've done our best. We have the answers. We have what we need. Remember again the words of Jesus, the comforting words in John chapter 12 and verse number 48. Jesus says in John 12, 48, He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. It is the words of Christ that will be the standard. So the question then for each one of us is, have we truly been obedient? When it comes to the day, day of judgment, it's not something that we have to live in fear of. It's something that we can live in hope of. Have you ever thought about the fact, again, going back to your childhood, maybe it was school, maybe it was even at home, but some type of reward that you were going to receive. And you look forward to that because you knew on that day you were going to receive exactly what you had earned, what you had worked for. When we think about the day of judgment and the certainty of it, I hope that it's something that you will not live in fear of, but you can be in hope of, of thinking about receiving that eternal reward. When we think about certain things, they don't always have to cause us fear. It's something that can give us comfort and peace. Death, taxes, and fill in the blank. What is it in your life maybe that you feel certain about? Well, hopefully, as you listen to this lesson, as you think about your life and God's Word, you can take comfort knowing that death and taxes and the day of judgment, they're coming, and we don't have to worry about that. The question actually is not in regards to this subject. The question actually is not what is for sure because we know some things that are for sure. The question actually is, are you prepared? When we think about Christians, when we think about the time when we were able to come to this building here and have Bible classes and have worship, and we hope to be able to do that again here in the near future, the reason that people do that, the reason that people study their Bible, the reason that Christians spend so much time studying the words of Christ, listening to the will of God, trying to follow after Him, is to be prepared. Sometimes here upon this earth, whether it was uh, the Y2K phenomenon or whether it's even been this idea of the pandemic and people rushing out and buying things like toilet paper or meat or whatever it was that you thought you might need, what was the idea behind it? Being prepared. And so when it comes to the day of judgment, it is certain absolutely certain for all of us whether you will still be alive when the Lord returns or whether you die and you're dead and then the day of judgment comes it is certain but the good news is you don't have to be afraid be prepared live a life that is ready for the day of judgment so that you can receive the reward the things that you've done in this body that are good we would gladly assist you in that first and foremost here upon this earth it involves becoming a Christian Friends, there's no greater decision in this life than deciding to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow after Jesus. The beautiful thing about the church, not the church building here that we're in, but the church, the people, is that we are taking this walk together. We are trying to help one another. When you deny yourself and you take up your cross and you follow after Him, you're joining a body of believers. We love one another because we all have the same goal in mind, and that is that we are all trying to encourage one another to be prepared. Perhaps you're watching this video and you're not a Christian. If you're here in the Saudi Daisy area or the Chattanooga area, we would love to study with you. Again, find us on social media, reach out to us either by text message, phone call, email, whatever it may be, and we would love to meet you and study the Bible with you. If you're not from this area, please find a local church of Christ that you can contact and talk to one of the members there about what you can do to become a Christian. We're thankful for you tuning into this video. We're thankful for the opportunity to study together. We hope that you will stay safe, that you will stay healthy, that you will continue to pray for our country and our leaders. We thank you for tuning in. And may God continue to bless you and bless all of us as we strive to follow Him.